Hello YouTubers, it is about 12 a.m. here and I just got done putting this system together, just my initial setup. I decided to add this in the equation for the shop, right where that suspended ceiling is. I'm going to add that in there since it's kind of a bigger room compared to my main room here. One of these will be going in here and one of these will be going in the very back shop right next to the Spectre Alert Classic. And this will go on that suspended ceiling I have in the shop with the low well 1x2. If you're wondering what this transformer is all about, it's for this. Because I want to convert this to a Sandy Bolt speaker, even though legitimately it is a Sandy Bolt speaker, it just never came with a transformer. And if you're wondering what, what this Lego thing's all about, I got a little creative. You can never you can never be too old to play with Legos, but this is kind of permanent. You could still take these off, but I took one of those boards apart. I actually built one of those built enclosure for one of these boards I had, which is in there. Judging see, I can see the two forts, exact same boards. Which, by the way, if you ask me where I got these boards from, it's Costco. But unfortunately, I cannot find these boards on the internet. These are special made boards, and my dad works at Costco, so he got me these years back, and I've kept them ever since, so I don't know what other substitutions there are for these boards. Got two RCA jacks, which they're going to be unused. This is the 3.5 mil that runs to this, which by the way, I spray painted. <laughs> it's black now, it's no longer that faded looking white color have a bunch of wires coming out of the back. Yeah, that's the way how I have it set up. This is Relay Closure 1, Relay Closure 2, and Relay Closure 3 is for this. Which this is the master control with the wire nut, which will connect to the PBX paging relay. When I dial feature 6 too, this will all activate. So currently, Relay Closure 2, it's connected to this board so I can click this into place. I have everything hidden in here. I even got creative and put this bypass switch in because I don't have a speaker there anymore. There's the original cheap driver right there. I might blow that someday. It's a cheap driver. 3.2 ohms. Cheap. Yeah, it's put that red LED in there a long time ago painted it black because it needed to be it needed to look nicer and presentable so what this switch does this is in relay mode actually no this is in relay mode so unless these are unless these wires are closed this will be on this is off completely this is bypass, so what this bypass does, it only turns on this amp. In case something goes wrong with this, it's for troubleshooting. Gotta have ways of troubleshooting things. This is just my power to this. This is the trigger wire that is connected here, so I had a if I already not told you that. I decided to stick another transformer in here, another one of those step up transformers to connect these two to kind of keep the channel separate. This just has a left and a right channel. I replaced the 3.5 mil jack with the new one. Did a lot of heavy hev heavy modifications to this. So till now it's off. So I want to put it back in relay mode. Severe thunderstorm warning. This was a little loud. It's always half that one watt, issue. too, by the way. Please be prepared to seek shelter. Try to do this one-handed. First, I'm going to reset it. Let it boot, because it actually does kind of boot in a way. I disconnected this and the reason I just decided to put in another relay to control the power to this 
I want to be Energy Star compliant. I want this to be Energy Star compliant so that way you can stick that nice Energy Star label on it. Because I care about the environment. Yes, I try to design my things to not consume as much energy, even if it means switching it on and off by a relay. Because, and at the end of the day, too, this won't, this thing won't run 24/7. Unlike some, you know, projector speakers I've seen. It needs, I like to be Energy Star compliant. Unless it's ready for use, I want it to. I rather it be ready for use, not be on 24/7. This is one of those instant on speakers too, so when you turn it on, there is no delay. It just pops right on. So now, here's my two wires. I'm going to turn it on. If you heard that pop, this came on, and it engaged this. And this closure is going to be for these strobes. So, yeah. That's how it works. I'm going to get ready to install this later in the day, technically speaking, since it is 12 in the morning. <laughs> My little lab going on over here. But everything seems to work. Just a mock setup. So this all works. So now, definitely ready to install. I will update you on how the progress is going in the shop. Okay, YouTubers, so I'm back here the next day. Got the shop all set up, but not this room yet. And this is where I'm going to put the next device right here on a piece of short conduit. Luckily, I had a cable here already. Not this one, but this cable here. That's the one that's going to the shop. Flip this on. I don't have nothing connected in here. Boom. So I have that on right now. It should be playing in the shop. Got this device connected. And I can adjust the volume. So it's louder. I put it in this corner over here. It's very tight up in this crevice up above. So that this is the progress. Uh, this is the progress so far. Just this shop is done. Next up's the other room. This is where the connections are made. Is in this box here. That and yes, it's a cookie tin in case you haven't realized. But I'm using it as a junction box. So I could, you know, modify connections over time. I could adjust the volume still. So, yep, this is.